We are going to install utility poles in Echo Canyon today. That's coming right up. Hi, I'm Roy Smith. I was planning to summarize the Echo Canyon project in today's video, but another package came in the mail this week from my friend Chris Perry in New Zealand. When I opened the package from Chris and saw what was inside, I decided that the project summary could wait. Now, I'm just a regular guy model railroader. That is the kind of model railroader that Steve Brown talks about. This show was about a regular guy building his model railroad because I'm just a regular guy building my model railroad. At the end of this video, I invite you to go on over to Steve's channel called It's My Railroad to find out how regular guy model railroaders build and operate a layout. I'll put a link to Steve's channel down below. Be sure to subscribe to his channel while you're over there. You will be glad you did. And of course, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you're new here. I try to post a new video every Saturday morning, and I don't want you to miss any of them because we have a lot of fun sharing the hobby on this channel. So, we're going to talk about utility poles today. As a regular guy model railroader, I would have used standard issue plastic utility poles along the tracks in Echo Canyon. But what Chris sent to me is anything but standard issue plastic poles. They are absolutely beautiful. Let me show you. The organizer he sent to me contains what he calls A, B, and C poles, which he explains in his instructions. He explains how the poles should be installed on the layout in the instructions. Look at that detail. Can you see it? Is that mind-boggling or what? In a moment, I'm going to go ahead and install the poles along the tracks here in Echo Canyon, and I know they're going to look fabulous but I want to say just a few things before doing that. First, I want to say thank you, Chris, for sending me these utility poles. Actually, this is the fifth package of detailed pieces that Chris has sent to me for my layout. Most of what he has sent is still awaiting installation on my layout. Chris has sent all of these materials to me without any expectation of reward or recognition. But I have to tell you that I am totally amazed by his attention to detail, his skill with small detail parts, and his desire to replicate what exists in the area that I'm modeling. Chris, you have made an enormous contribution to my layout, and I want you to know how much I appreciate it. One of the very best things is the way we get to share the hobby with other model railroaders. And Chris, you are an upstanding example of that. Chris tells me that he hasn't started to build his own layout just yet, but he hopes to do so within the next few months. When he does, we will be able to follow his progress. Thanks to Chris, I may just be the only model railroader in the whole world to have exact replicas of the actual utility poles in Echo Canyon. Check out this photo of utility poles in Echo Canyon. The gift from Chris got me to thinking about utility poles along real railroad tracks, something I otherwise would never have thought about. I began to ask myself some thought-provoking questions such as these. Why historically were telegraph poles located along the tracks? Why do utility poles still appear so prominently along the tracks in Echo Canyon when they have been removed in so many other places? Who actually owns the utility poles that we see in Echo Canyon today? What are those utility poles used for? Power or telephone service to remote ranches in the canyon, perhaps? Have any underground cables been laid? And importantly, do these utility lines serve in railroad communication 
and signaling? I ask myself these kinds of mind-numbing questions because I find this kind of stuff to be intriguing. But I concluded that I still have a lot to learn about railroad communication and signaling systems. As I was doing my research, I was especially fascinated to read about the first transcontinental telegraph line which ran through Echo Canyon in 1861. The telegraph brought the famous Pony Express service to an immediate end, and it came through Echo Canyon eight years before the Union Pacific tracks were laid through the canyon in 1869. It's interesting that the original telegraph lines were moved in 1869 after the tracks were laid to locate the lines along the tracks. Clearly, these telegraph lines were important to the railroad. The telegraph made it possible to instantly know when trains would be departing and arriving from stations along the way. Railroads could safely schedule more trains and move people and goods more quickly because of the telegraph. Today, Echo Canyon is a busy corridor for the railroad, Interstate 80, and modern communications and utility lines. Of course, the telegraph has been replaced by radio dispatching and electronic signals. I'm not totally sure about this, but I believe that ABS, or automatic block signaling, is used for trains running through Echo Canyon. And either power lines or buried cable is used to operate the signaling system. Apparently, the pole lines are still used in Echo Canyon because they work just fine and replacing them with other, more modern systems would cost a lot of money. I have learned a lot in my research so far, and I would love to share more of it with you, but it would make your head spin just as it has done to me. I think one thing is certain. Removing the pole lines from Echo Canyon would change the landscape there dramatically, and for some in the hobby, that would be sad. Well, all of this is fascinating, but it's time to install the utility poles that Chris sent. But we're not going to just stick them in the ground at random. No, as I said, Chris included instructions for installing them. Let's start by laying them out because they must be properly spaced, and each of them must face the right direction. First, how far apart should they be? Chris suggested that they should be spaced the length of one and a half or two diesels apart. And in Model Railroader Forum, I read that they should be spaced between seven and a half and eleven and a quarter inches apart in end scale. In another forum, I read that you can take two 50-foot boxcars, couple them together on the adjacent track, and space the poles apart according to the combined length of the two boxcars, which of course would be 100 feet apart. But ultimately the best advice both from Chris and on the forums was this. Selective compression is a necessary part of model railroading. So you can space them a distance apart that looks good for you. That's probably what a regular guy model railroader would do in any case. Also remember that the cross arms should be facing each other on adjacent poles. Chris explains this very clearly with sketches in his instructions. The first pole should have its cross arms on the left side, and the second pole should have its cross arms on the right side. The third one on the left side, and the fourth one on the right side, and so on. However, Chris did include a pole with cross arms on both sides to put in the center of the rest. And this unique kind of pole seems to be associated with signal relay boxes along the tracks. Okay, let's get started. So, I've laid them out according to the instructions about spacing and facing direction. Now we can begin to install them. Each one has an installation pin on the bottom. I need to drill a hole to insert the pin into. I don't have a pin vise to do this with, so I was planning to use my Dremel tool to drill the holes. Unfortunately, the collet on my Dremel is too big to hold very small drill bits. They simply fall out. I could use my monster drill. This holds very small drill bits, but it weighs a ton. 
So I'm going to use my small drill. It's lightweight and holds the drill bits securely. Here we go. Stand back, this could get dangerous. And there you have it. I'm not gluing them in the holes just yet because I have to get to the track to paint it and ballast it later on. After I do that, I'll come back and glue the utility poles in the holes. Doesn't that look fabulous? Very much like the prototype, don't you think? I'm very pleased with this. I'm not planning to stretch thread or wire of any kind between the poles. Trying to do that would make me even crazier than I already am. No doubt I would get it all tangled up. Besides, the wires probably would be invisible to the naked eye in end scale. Well, we have added yet another important detail to Echo Canyon. I hope you're having as much fun as I am with the Echo Canyon project. If you are, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe because there's still a lot of work to be done on my layout and I don't want you to miss any of it. Be sure to post any comments you may have down below because this kind of interaction with others in the hobby is one of the best things about model railroading. I will include a link to the entire Echo Canyon series down below and on the end page to this video. There you have it. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy railroading. I'm Roy Smith, and I will see you again very soon.